Welcome to another episode of Community Chat. Uh, this series of uh, Community Chats, this is geared towards the upcoming elections on April 29th, right here in the town of Abington, as uh, we are preparing you with some of the candidates who are having discussions. Uh, not only are we going to speak with the folks who are running for Board of Selectmen and for Planning Board, but also individuals who are seeking uh, one or two seats that are open on the school committee. Joining us today is a candidate for a school committee. We have Melanie Whitney who is joining us. Melanie, welcome to Community Chat. Thank you, thank you for having me. You got it. Let's start right out and uh, ask, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, so I'm Melanie Whitney. I've been in Abington for over 10 years. Um, I have two children, both in the Abington school systems. I have a daughter in the fifth grade and a son in the second grade. Um, I've been very active in the community in various respects through the PTOs at school, um, through the Girl Scouts, through sports, um, as well as being on the committee that helped build this beautiful new facility. Excellent. Uh, what made you decide that you wanted to seek office, run for school committee? I've been passionate about schools um, for a long time, even before kids. Um, my mom was very involved in schools and I saw the benefit that that had for me personally. Um, and I've been going to school committees for the last several years um, and I'm very passionate about what they're talking about. I have a lot of questions as I sit there. I'm jotting down notes asking, well, have we thought about this? What about that? Um, I've had various leadership positions within the community and I'm ready to take on an additional responsibility with an elected seat um, and school committee is, is definitely where I want to be. Talk about any knowledge or experience that you may have. I think you probably already kind of mentioned that uh, a little bit of a tidbit there. But some of the things that you feel would be a, a, an attributes to the school committee if you were elected. Sure. Um, so from a leadership perspective, I have taken leadership roles in PTO boards. Um, I've been a Girl Scout leader uh, for a number of years. So I've worked with children and worked with families in the community for as long as my daughter's been alive. Um, I also, in, the, in my other life, uh, my non-volunteer life, I'm a CPA, so numbers is my thing. Um, that's something that I think is going to be increasingly important for us. Um, I have a lot of confidence in our superintendent and Dr. Michelle walking into that seat. She has great knowledge of the budget, and I want to be there to support her and find new ways to fund what we may not have been able to fund in the past or find new ways to get creative uh, and not cut things from our budget. Talk to me about some of the public's main concerns regarding the town's school system. Uh, I think our concerns have changed a lot over the last couple years. Um, if I look at pre-COVID, I think a lot of our concerns were class sizes, um, accreditation, what's going on at the high school to ensure that kids are ready for postgraduate work. Um, I think we've come a long way in all of those facets. Um, COVID kind of took a pause on a lot of the initiatives because our focus had to be focused on actually getting an education out to students. So I think now we're back into other um, strategic priorities in the schools. And I think ELL, um, you know, we've had a changing demographic. We've wanted to make sure that the students who don't have English as their first language can be educated the same way students who speak English um, or were born speaking English. Um, I think that's been a big focus. I think social emotional has also been a big focus. I think there are a lot of people in the community that are concerned with mental health, uh, with safety of the students, both physical and mental safety and emotional safety. Um, and I think that there's still, there always will be a focus on the educational piece in the curriculum and how things like MCAS and other tests are done and how they're evolving to meet the needs of what a postgrad um, student will need. In, the, in life. Okay. Uh, the school committee, uh, as of recent, has had to address the public's concerns regarding masking students during COVID, books in the middle high school library, uh, school being in session during Good Friday. Uh, if elected, how would you address 
public the public's concerns on items like this. Again, I'm not looking for specifics on any mm -hmm. of the ones that I mentioned. But folks do come to the school committee and voice their concerns because they care about the education and the good of our, our, our youth. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think it's a tough question because I think my response would be different based on the, the challenge. First and foremost, everyone deserves to be heard. I don't think anyone is voicing a concern to the school committee with malintentions. I think um, you know everyone has a different style of parenting. Everyone has a different view on the role of school and how the child should be brought up with within the school system. Um, I, I think the, the first thing is, is to make sure that people can be heard and open that line of communication. I think the second piece is to be as transparent as we can about what decisions are being made, how decisions are being made. Um, I view school committee as policy, um, not necessarily as um, a political party that's gonna lobby at a state or national level. I think they do have a role in ensuring people have um, the contact information to, to initiate those things on their own. Um, but the biggest piece for me is just making sure people feel they can be heard and listen to, because I think those are also two different things, hard and actually listened to and considered. Okay. Um, what challenges do you see the school system facing in the near future, and how do you feel the school committee should address those needs or challenges? I think we have um, some long-term challenges mm -hmm. that we need to think about, and I, unfortunately I'm not aware as to the discussions. I'm sure they've been there have been discussions along these long-term considerations, but I think our growing class sizes, our growing population, and our changing population, we all know Abington has um, a lot of new building, which is great. Um, you know, our town is growing and thriving, but at the same point, we have to ensure that our schools are ready for those changing demographics and the growth in, in number of students. Uh, Beaverbrook has m a much larger class size than the Woodsdale and the high school and middle school. So we are going to have a bubble that's coming up through our physical buildings. Um, so we need to be thinking about how will we fit, you know, a 190 person second grade class in the high school where that class size or maybe the middle school because some kids go private for high school. But, you know, my daughter's class is maybe 160 kids in fifth grade and my son's is 190 in second. That's a big difference. Um, so we need to start thinking about that because those are really big ticket items. And then I think we also need to think about staffing. Um, there's not as many people going into the teaching profession, especially after the last few years. We've seen some early retirements or people who have changed course. Um, we need to ensure that we keep our teachers and our educators across the board, not just the primary t-shirts. Um, so I think those are probably the two biggest focus focuses for long-term planning. Okay. My next question, I think you might have already kind of mentioned it uh, to, to a degree. Talk about your understanding of the school budget, how it's funded, and what more needs to be done to consistently provide uh, for the district's educational needs. The budget's interesting. Um, I've spent a lot of time just being a numbers person. I like to look at all the numbers. Um, we spend a lot of money in areas that I feel may be beyond our control. Um, you know, the number of students who don't go to school in Abington and are going to either um, other schools or day programs um, for people with special needs. Um, so I'm curious what, because to me those might be, sorry, those might be non-controllable items, but maybe, maybe we can control them. We, maybe we can look at different contracts. Um, I think we need to really buckle down in terms of um, providing transparency because there's there's a lot of money that we're getting through grants and it's hard in a school committee meeting to follow all those ins and outs and what's coming from a taxpayer and what's coming from grants and it feels as though we may not have the same level of programming that other schools do yet we just got approved this week a seven percent increase in our budget so we're doing great you know, we're not laying off teachers on an annual basis, which is wonderful. I think we have a very stable budget, but I, I almost want to push it a little further to see what else we might be able to get, either through grant funding um, or even fee-for-service type programs available to students. Okay. We talked a little bit about the financial. Let's, let's talk about the capital needs. Let's talk about buildings we know we have, mm -hmm. a new middle, 
high school building, what's somewhat new, it's what, five, six years mm -hmm. since it was uh, built and, and opened. Uh, what do you think are some of the, the capital needs for the district that you may be aware of or that you'd like to take a look at? I think our elementary schools are aging. Um, I know from discussions that there are HVAC considerations at the Beaverbrook that we need to think about. I know with um, whatever's happening with our crazy weather, we have a lot of hot days, um, both in September and June, and there are some people who believe we need air conditioning um, units in some of those elementary school, or at least some sort of temp control. Um, the biggest piece, I think, is just the actual building themselves. Will we accommodate the growing size of Abington? Um, and do we need to think about which grades are in which buildings? And do we need to find space for to add on to a building? You know, is there an opportunity to build up at Beaverbrook? Is there an opportunity to build out at Woodsdale? Um, I think Alenowitz, we've um, used the space very wisely here in this location. Um, so we're going to have to look to those other spaces to see if there's a way that we can add more space if the demographic study shows that we need that. Let's talk educational components. So what educational programming do you feel the district should add or seek to offer in the future to give our children the, the best advantage when it comes to career paths or, or art, the arts? I think, um, I think I need to think about that question in, in two segments. One sure. is was elementary and one is, you know, seventh grade through 12th grade perhaps. So if I take elementary, that's where I have more experience because that's the age of my kids. Um, that I'd like to see more um, arts added into our curriculum. And maybe that's not during school time because I understand that the school days are very crunched and teachers are having a hard time fitting everything in. But perhaps through after school clubs, intramurals, I'd love to see more kids um, be a part of various aspects of life earlier on. So drama, music, um, actual art lessons, cooking, sports, all of those things are things that students who come from a family who can either afford or have the flexibility to bring them to those programs can participate in. Students who don't have either of those two things or who have transportation issues are left out. And they're, those early years are the years where you can really get that excitement and draw out their passions. Um, so that's what I'd like to see. I think the, the K through five, six teachers, I don't have experience with six, K through five teachers are doing an excellent job on the academic side. Um, I think we'll need continual support to deal with the, the expanding gap of students. Um, you know, we've got some students who are still learning to read in second grade, and we have some students who are reading, you know, 500 page books on their own. Um, and I, I don't know that that is gonna narrow in the next couple years. Um, but then if I look to 7th through 12th, I think electives are a huge benefit for our kids. Um, being able to tap into a passion that they have through an elective as opposed to just Algebra 1, um, you know, offering things like statistics for the kids who's math oriented. Um, I had an accounting program in my high school and I'm an accountant, so that was awesome for me. Those types of electives, we, we don't currently have as many as, as I think would be desired by department heads. Um, at the last few meetings, you've heard department heads come in saying it'd be awesome to have X, Y, Z. I'd love to be able to offer those to our students. Um, and I think a, a huge um, focus of mine would be language. Um, I'd love to see language offered earlier for our kids, and I'd love to see more than just one option for language. So we talked about funding. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's been robust the past couple of years, whether mm -hmm. it's because of the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, whether it's monies that the the state has put in through the Student Opportunity Act, if we start seeing tough fiscal times mm -hmm. and the funding is, is not as robust and you have any say in it, what types of programs would you want to save from the acts, the budget acts, or from being cut? I would like to save the summer programming that we have right now. I think that is a huge benefit for students who are not within a structured environment for an 11 week period over the summer. Uh, I think that's one area where it'd be easy to cut because it's not during the normal school year, but I think it has a huge value for some of our most at risk students. Um, I'd like to continue to see our class sizes stay as low as they are, but if we had to bump them up slightly, because of funding, I'd like to see that happen 
first um, summer. That being said, you know, I'd like to have a discussion with the teachers too. What could we give up? Could we give up any of the new curriculum programs we're going after? Could we still use our old curriculum instead of implementing something new? Um, I think those are questions that we'd need to have a very in-depth discussion with both the educators as well as with the community to understand. Um, as a parent, what's a comfortable number for class size for you? I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. honestly, I, my kids, I'd like to see it where it's like maybe 15 or 20, but I, I don't know if those days have gone by and mm -hmm. we have to deal with growing class sizes and 25 and 30 is going to be the new normal. What, for you, what would you like to see? I think on the younger side, so if you're looking at a Beaverbrook, an 18 to a 20 is a good number. Um, Abington's a little bit different in that we have a paras in a lot of our rooms. We have multiple paras. Yep. Um, I think within the physical space of our classrooms, our classrooms in Beaverbrook are not very big. We saw that with other towns that were able to do um, more in school during COVID because they had a bigger space to be in so they could have more students in. Our classrooms are little. Um, so I think 18 to 20 is a comfortable size without um, a budget constraint. I think at the Woodsdale, you could get a little bit bigger because the students are a little bit more regulated, um, but you're still seeing students who need to move more. Then when I was a kid, you know, you sat in your seat and you didn't move from your seat. It's very different now. Students need to move more, um, and like it or not, the school committee seat isn't gonna change the amount of movement that children need to grow. Um, so I, I think, as they get older, your class sizes can grow a little bit in terms of the numbers. I think as you get into you know, 11th, 12th, uh, those upper grades, you can have a bigger class size because more work can be done independently. So I'd like to try and focus on those early ed years having the smaller class sizes. Maybe at the Woodsdale, my number would be 22, 23. And as you get up, my daughter right now, I think is 26 in her class. That feels big to me. Mm -hmm. If she were 24, I would feel more comfortable. It's only two kids, but um, I think, you know, uh, under seventh grade, a class size of 25 or up seems big to me. Okay. We're getting to that point of our conversation where I kind of throw it at you and say, is there anything that we have not discussed? It's a question that has been asked, but you can take a moment to kind of talk about something or even reiterate something that we've discussed. And now's your time to, uh, to kind of share it with the audience. I think um, for me, Community is huge. Um, Superintendent Schaefer has said he loves working in Abington because it's a great community, and I agree. I don't know if all of our community agrees that this is a great community, and that's what I would be curious to find out. Um, I think ensuring that each student and each family feels that they have a connection to other people in the community is big. I'd love to draw a little bit more interaction between the kids in school age and their families with the families who don't have children or the seniors. I'd like to get a little bit more involvement um, as well as with our businesses. I think, you know, I worked for a while at a bank and we did the Credit for Life program at high schools. Abington now has that, which is awesome. Um, but those types of programs, you know, the banks want to get their name out there and they have the expertise. So why not take them up on that and provide this awesome opportunity for our kids? I think there's ways, you know, being in, in private industry that we've had to get creative with utilizing resources. I'd like to see that happen more in the schools. Um, and I think if you, if you target a specific ask, a lot of people rise to the occasion and want to help out the schools. And I think it's kind of a win-win too. You know, you get a senior who may want to get out of the house and see a kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can come in and read to a classroom and it's a win-win. So those types of community, that's, that's another area that's not budget, not curriculum, um, but an area where I think school committee can kind of connect people and dots. Okay. Folks want to find out more about your campaign for office. They mm -hmm. want to reach out to you or just read up on you. Yep. How can they find out more information about you? Um, you can always email me, uh, melaniewhitney3 at gmail. I have a Facebook page, um, Melanie Whitney for School Committee. So I'm very interested in hearing from anyone. Um, I sat down and had coffee with people I hadn't met before. Um, I think one of the most rewarding parts of campaigning right now is meeting new people and seeing my lawn sign. If, for, if you don't know, I'm the bright yellow lawn signs. Um, if they're on a lawn whose house I don't even know, I'm like, wow, someone 
wants to support me and they're not supporting me because they're my friend. They're supporting me because they believe in me. And that is very, very motivating um, and exciting to see. And I just, I, I'd love to meet more people. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us here and, and sharing information about your campaign for school committee. And we want to thank you at home for tuning into a program like this where we do our best to keep you informed as to what's going on in the community and some of the folks who are within it. So if you have any questions, you can always drop us a line at info at abingtoncam.tv. Also remember that uh, if you don't know what's going on regarding the town elections, these shows are perfect. Elections are on April 29th, it's a Saturday. If you're not sure if you're registered to vote, if you want to get involved, contact the town clerk's office. That's your best way. Until our next conversation, have yourself a great day.